Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. It's probably been a couple of days since you watched any videos of ours, judging by how three people, and that's about it, watched our show yesterday. I'm just messing with you guys, but seriously, it's amazing. Certain shows I think will do well, they don't. Apparently you guys didn't want to know about Paddington Bear on a vinyl record. You guys are losing out, because that was a cool record. And we talked about a whole lot of other cool stuff too. Even had a little contest, but it's your loss. Go back and watch that video, will you? I get a thing from YouTube and they're like, this video is severely underperforming. And it gives me these lists of things. Think about, it's basically like, think about your life and the, all the wrong you have done to create this horrible video. And by the way, we're not even going to recommend it to anybody. And it's just like, cheapers, creepers, you know, <laughs> give me a break. I can't, I guess they all can't be super successful. But overall... I feel like we've been very successful. We're getting a lot more clicks on views, or clicks on views, clicks on videos, views, all that good stuff. And that's all thanks to you. So it's my job to make something interesting enough that you will dedicate time out of your busy day to watch it. So I need to shape up. So hopefully, I mean, if you're watching this, apparently I did that to the degree of being able to propose an interesting subject for today. Now, I am going to live up to what the thumbnail says. We are going to create a radio station right here, right before your eyes. By the way, this light, I've noticed makes my hand look blue and lifeless, which is not cool. So just rest assured my circulation isn't as bad as it looks on there. It's something to do with the fluorescent light. I can actually change the color temperature. I need to find a more pleasing color temperature. Anyway, um, I just try to mostly make it nice and bright so you can see what's going on. So what do we need in order to broadcast, to make a radio station? We need a transmitter and a receiver. The receiver is easy, that's just a radio. But a transmitter, how can you go about doing that? Now there are transmitters you can buy, little pocket devices. In fact, Redicus uh, makes AM and FM ones too, I believe. But we're gonna take a look at two embedded transmitters and two pieces of equipment. First is this. This is the Studebaker CD player, and we've reviewed this in the past, so I'm not gonna go over all the features again. Super thick little guy, but I like it. It's a cool, chunky, 50s looking thing, and I, I just think it's super cool. What's really neat about this, though, is it has an FM transmitter built in. Battery powered, running off of um, everything. Well, all the, both the transmitters we're gonna look at are uh, both battery powered. So, what's interesting is usually it picks an arbitrary uh, frequency to broadcast on. This one looks like it is adjustable or to transmit on. Uh, 87.5 to 108 megahertz. So that's kind of interesting. I guess we'll change it or test it in the menu. Why is this a thing? Why is there a FM transmitter in a CD player? The reason is because the idea is that if you have a car without an aux input or a um, Bluetooth input or whatever, you can transmit to your car's stereo system. It's even got a little magnetic mount. If you have like a cell phone mount, a magnetic one, it'll uh, attach right to it. So for subject matter, we're gonna go old time radio because I think it's cool. Now, in the geek realm of things, why would you want to do this? Think about if you have a vintage radio and how, I remember my dad, I got my, my very first Crosley and we've shown it on the show a couple of times if you go way back, uh, was a Crosley retro looking uh, kind of a tombstone radio, like an old 40s looking radio, had cassette player and, and we I modded it to do a line input. But I remember when my dad got that, or when, when I got that, I was, got it in a Cracker Barrel in Branson, Missouri. And it was so exciting to have that thing. But um, I remember he was like, wouldn't it be cool, son, if you could, if you turned on the radio and it played old radio and it told, played old radio, you heard old radio over it. And we laughed it off because it was like, yeah, how are you going to do that? You know, except for playing a cassette tape on it. But, you know, the idea of actually receiving over the air, you know, vintage radio transmissions is something that's kind of intriguing. So the idea is if you have a retro radio, you can use this method to get retro radio. Both of these transmitters are FM only. So we have to go with an FM receiver or radio. We're going to start with this Kmart, a.k.a. the SS Kresge Company. I think we dated this to 76. So, I mean, it's brown. So, you know, it's 70 something. I remember growing up in the 80s, everything was still brown, sort of as a holdover from the 70s. But it's just everything, carpet, cars, you name it, everything was brown. It was like the official color of the 80s. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in and pick up some old time radio. 
So make sure this is working. Okay. Why am I not hearing anything? We are powered on. I did hose this down with deoxit some time ago. AM FM switch. It's too bad the uh, the uh, chrome is flaking off in the volume. Why on earth? Is this thing dead? Wait, 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 wait. Something's rotten in Denmark here. I heard a little bit of a buzz. Is this thing even on? Okay, it wasn't supposed to be a show about a broken radio. Yeah, I hear a little blip. I think this. I think the tuning. I think the volume is oxidized. Oh wait. Okay, now it's coming to life. Weird. Maybe the. Uh, it doesn't have tubes. Nothing has to warm up. It's transistorized. Okay. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> let's turn this on. So, our transmitter, and it even has like a little transmit tower icon in there. So we're gonna play our CD. And how do you know what frequency you are transmitting on? By the way, that little icon right there is the anti-skip buffering in. Okay, these batteries are questionable, yeah? FM, program, mode. Oh, that's just play mode. Okay, so how do you know what transmission... Okay, there you go. 88.1 is actually pretty good. So you can adjust the frequency here. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and make sure our CD is playing 88.1. There's our there's our transmitter. And we're going to roll back here to 88.1. That would be back here. Genius. We can get the AM gauge. And turn our volume up. See what we can get. What did he say? Family driving. Okay. Will be a revelry. And that would be no. So let's go ahead and adjust the frequency. Obviously, this is super low range, like three feet. Or actually, no, it goes up to about 30 feet. 90.1, that's a local station. Let's try more like 89. And then on here, there we are. Ooh, yeah. Why is it so daggum quiet? In fact, I'm going to put it on by the microphone over here. Okay, there's something wrong with this radio. So, I don't know if the volume is just oxidized or perhaps it needs some new capacitors. Let's try it on a modern radio. More modern. This is a Redicus radio, AM, FM, pretty basic radio, but cool. I do like it. Let me get this out of the way. The next transmitter, the next transmitter we use is going to be cool. I think you're going to enjoy it. So apparently this is a Fred Allen episode. We're on FM. And what did I say? We're like 89-ish. Is going, that is quite possible. There we go. Tell me what, uh, what else is in the news? Nothing, girl. Has a newspaper. So a little Fred Allen there. We've got a transmitter, a receiver, a radio station right here on the workbench. It'd be nice to be able to test if it's stereo or not. There's no stereo indicator on here. Okay. So that's one thing. That's cool. That is very cool. I think that's cool. Because, you know, think about like having an old radio and you could put old time radio on it. I think that's cool without having to modify it or anything like that. But let's take it to the next level. I'm going to turn this off. The frequency just opened up. That's why it got loud. And we're going to grab another FM transmitter. This one is cool because it's a record player with a built in transmitter. Say hello to the Crosley Revolution. This is the better of the two. This is the one that has the magnetic cartridge. And you're gonna see the red tab. You're gonna be like, that's not magnetic, that's ceramic. 
it's actually not. This is actually a magnetic cartridge. It's a pretty good cartridge. They use this in the T200 as well. It's a good little cartridge. However, this unit, how do I open it? This unit has some wow and flutter. <laughs> Jeez, I need to really dust things off before I, you know, start recording. Um, the wow and flutter is, is rough on this. So I, I haven't taken it apart to see if it's an older, it was an old, new old stock essentially, because it was like 10 years on the shelf. So it might just need a more pliable belt. It's hard to say. So what we're going to do with this guy, it has a built-in FM transmitter as well. Let's look on the bottom. So this one has set frequencies. So the transmitter, we're going to turn it to on 88.1 or 89.9. So let's do that. I like the little, oops, let's not rip the tone arm off its base. I like the tiny little slip mat. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's a cool concept. I like the concept. I like the carry handle. It's battery operator. In fact, I'm running it off of six double A's right now. There's the motor mount. You can adjust the speed. So it's it's a it's a cool little unit. Magnetic cartridge, all that good stuff. It just this one has wild flood. So again, keeping with the old time radio theme, let's listen to some old time radio. I keep seeing these records loose. They're from one of those Reader's Digest sets. The kind with the flap, and then we've got a few of them, but I've never seen the actual complete set of this collection, just loose records. But it's good for uh, copyright free ish content. So let's go ahead and put this on here 12 inch record. I think this looks cool. Take our cartridge protector on. How many people were betting I'd forget that? Close the lid. And there we go. It's got a built in speaker too. She sounds pretty good, right? So I'm turning the volume down on the built-in speaker because we're going to try and pick it up. The Lone Ranger! Yeah, oh, we had it. Come on. There it is. A fiery horse. No. Ranger! Try to fine-tune this. Helps if I use a tuning dial. Adventure, comedy, drama. It all came tumbling out of the airwaves night after night when radio was king. Dial, sit back, and remember. All right, you guys. Another radio station here. We got a vinyl record transmitting wirelessly over FM to the radio. In the early western United States, nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver! Silver! The Lone Ranger! The Lone Ranger. One of my favorite, favorite radio shows just for that. The, the, the Lone Ranger! The voices are great. So, anyway, I hope you thought this was cool. This is totally uh, geek stuff. I mean, this is geek central. We're creating an FM radio station, in, you know, in the uh, right here on the workbench. Why? Because it's cool. Because it's fun. The possibilities are somewhat endless. You could even take this battery-operated record player into your car, drive really carefully, and broadcast a record to your car's radio. Why? Why not? Why not? Others ask why, I ask why not. <laughs> anyway, I, thought, I hope you think this is cool, interesting, and uh, again, FM transmission kind of had this little spike in popularity before Bluetooth kind of dominated the wireless market. So it's an interesting, interesting thing. It's something that's kind of cool to you know contemplate the possibilities. I always gravitate towards old time radio with this kind of stuff because I just think it's interesting. I like the retro, I like the vintage, so as you guys know. So anyway, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Think of any applications for this technology that I'm not thinking of. It's kind of interesting possibilities we can come up with. All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.